Hi, I'm Will Saris. I'm an actor and YouTube host who's always been interested in the intersection between history and entertainment. And what better person to embody that than P.T. Barnum? Welcome to Who is Barnum to You, a lively discussion that celebrates personal connections, insights, and inspirations drawn from Barnum's life based on fact, fiction, fun, or just plain imagination and nostalgia. Today we're talking to Shauna Melton. She's a poet, painter, educator, and author. Thanks for being with us, Shauna. So tell me first a little bit about who you are and your background. So I am a painter, poet, and art educator. I was born in Bridgeport. Okay. I teach art classes and I run writing workshops locally and throughout the tri-state area. It's something I've been working to expand. I was previously nominated for State Poet Laureate. I do a lot of performance art and um, ex exhibitions with my paintings. I'm a Connecticut art hero from the Connecticut Office of the Arts. And I am an award winner from the Arts and Cultural Empowerment Award with the Cultural Alliance of Fairfield County, Black Girls Rock, the Al Aziz Islamic Center. And I'm currently working with the Urban Scholars Program at LifeBridge in Bridgeport, where okay. I teach art to children in their after school program, as well as continuing to exhibit, have artist talks, perform. And I'm right now I'm currently running online workshops with City Lights Gallery. I run the writers group. And I also am starting a poetry series um, highlighting poets throughout the tri-state area and having readings um, virtually. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, oh, and I'm the art ambassador of the Mary and Eliza Freeman Center. <laughs> Which I really want to talk to you about and we'll get to in a second. So tell me, because one of the things that you did, I believe, late last year and early this year was you had an exhibition here at the Barnum Museum. Yes. Right? Tell me a little bit about that. So the exhibit is called Her Dragons Fly. Mm -hmm. I have an infatuation with dragonflies. You know, a native tradition, they mean transition and evolving mm -hmm. and change. And around the time of my grandmother's passing, I began seeing a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And once I learned the meeting and evaluating where my life was and how it was changing at the time, her dragon's fly became symbolic of my transformation. Mm -hmm. And I found also that it also resonated with other people in their own. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I approached Kathy about having an exhibit here because I had one in 2009. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was fitting to bring it full circle. And we did, we, we had an inaugural exhibition in the Barnum Museum Gallery of Her Dragon's Fly. I had 18 paintings nice. and we had two artist talks, tours. It was really well received. I was really thankful for it. That's awesome. And so I wanna transition now a little bit to, to your connection sort of with, with the museum obviously is, is through that, but it's also through your connection with the Freeman Houses. Tell me about the Freeman Houses. So the Freeman houses are the two remaining houses from Little Liberia in the south end of Bridgeport, closer okay. to Seaside Park. And so the Liberia means free land. Mm -hmm. It was established before Liberia in Africa. There are multiple versions of it throughout the coastal waterfronts. Bridgeport had one and it was so powerful because Bridgeport was created by Trumbull, Fairfield, and Stratford giving parts of their land to make the city hmm. so that things could come here that they didn't necessarily want in their communities like hospitals and cow tanning factories and the gun companies and things like that. But in hmm. this area not being appealing hmm. to them, it made it safe for people of color. Mm -hmm. And so they had their own school, they had their own church, Walter's AME Zion, they had Bethel AME Zion, they had um, clothing companies, real estate companies, whaling industries, and the nephew of the Emperor of Haiti settled here, George Francis, and he had a um, fabric company. Mm -hmm. and. They did all kinds of work. There's a beautiful speech on our website for the Freeman Center um, where you can see them fighting for voting rights in 1849. Wow. Um, and so Mary and Eliza Freeman's houses are the last ones standing that haven't been changed. They haven't been wow. restored or altered. Hmm. And so the Free Mary and Eliza Freeman Center 
are doing the work to restore it. We became one of the 11 most historic places in America, which preserves the houses and gives us room to work and reconstruct them with as much preservation as possible. Um, and the goal is for them to become a literacy center and museum in the future. Wow. wow. I, now, I grew up in Trumbull and Stratford, and I now live nearby. I had no idea that a lot that of was people even don't. there. A lot of people don't, and that's the goal, right? <laughs> to make sure people start to. Yeah. I've gone into schools and taught kids about it with the Pierre Dosen program run through the Housatonic Museum. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the beginning, I say, what do you think of Bridgeport? And you get all the stereotypes and, you know, things that they've validly experienced. Right. But then when you give them that history and understanding that even though people don't always have the best intentions for this place, we're resilient. We come up, we're artists, we're musicians, we're creators, we're entrepreneurs. All of that exists here. And you're not always the stereotype. Mm -hmm. And they leave those lessons with so much pride yeah. and gratitude for seeing that there's more than what people will say or what other people think this city can be. Yeah. Um, so it's been one of my most enlightening and yeah. joyful experiences. Once you know the history and you stand outside those houses and look around, the whole neighborhood changes mm -hmm. for you. Like you start to see the past there. Yeah. In, 18, in the 1850s, Mary Freeman was the second wealthiest person under P.T. Barnum. Wow. They had to buy her out of her land. She owned a lot of real estate. They had to buy her out of her land to build the train tracks, which uh, gave her the money that made her the second wealthiest under P.T. Barnum. That is amazing. I had no, again, I had no clue. I had no idea that that was there, mm -hmm. that that existed. And that's our connection kind of now through this to, to P.T. Barnum, that she was the second wealthiest person in the state. And they were pretty That's, much neighbors. Seaside yeah. Park was P.T. Barnum's backyard. That's yeah. where he had the circus, right? And so it's only water that divided those two places. Wow. So they were at the same time in the same area living two completely different experiences, yeah. um, which is also <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Now, is there, do you know of any, and someone else may be able to better answer this, I don't know, but mm -hmm. do you know of any connection that they had? Did they talk? Did they interact? No. Do you know anything like that? With, sure. this, with this, we're constantly still looking for all the history. Mm -hmm. Most of our history is written. Okay. And so one of the hopes with the restoration of the Barnum Museum um, is that once we start to see more of P.T. Barnum's things, then we might find pictures. We might right. find something across the water, you know, where yeah. you see what was happening in some way, because most of our documentation is written and, and mm. oral. It's not um, visual. Right. Um, I got involved because I, as a painter, I was part of the Reimagining Little Liberia project, which called for artists mm. to create visual images of the time that's written, that's right. only written history. And now tell me, because I'm assuming then that that means it must have been on the Underground Railroad as yes. well. Yes. Well, when you hear about um, Bridgeport being part of the Underground Railroad, you hear of Walter's AME Zion, yeah. which is true, but it's also the water, because hmm. they would take canoes from Long Island into Bridgeport the same way the ferry goes, come in the back of Little Liberia and find safe spaces to exist until they could either, either stay or go on to their next place. Wow. Irish people were one step up a among yeah. black people and so when they went to war and came back they needed somewhere to go and they weren't welcome right in other neighborhoods so they built literally physically built their place to live on top of the houses mm -hmm. so one of the reasons the freeman houses were cited for blight is because the ex exterior that were built by the irish <laughs> was falling apart. Was falling <laughs> apart. And so Maisa had to get all of that removed to prove wow. that the actual houses were still there. Were still there. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So much history that I I had no idea. I had mm -hmm. no idea. And now so you are now you're working with them to create art as well as obviously teaching. What are some of the pieces that you've been able to kind of 
create? Tell me a little bit about them. I know it's it's hard when you don't have the piece here, but. Well, no, um, every year my church, Mount Airy, mm -hmm. does the My Alpha production. And for two years, I wrote, produced, and directed it. Wow. And so it's the journey of people from Africa through the Middle Passage to now. So we'll talk about, you know, slavery. We'll talk about the Middle Passage. We'll talk about Black Lives Matter. We'll mm -hmm. talk about civil rights movement, all the people involved. But it's a, it's a theatrical mm -hmm. performance. And at the end of every Ma'atha, we go there at like sunrise and do a release of the ancestors. Mm -hmm. And we release flowers and drum and dance and give thanks to the ancestors for their stories, their efforts, yeah. their energy. And so all this time we've been doing this for almost two decades now, but wow. nobody knew until I went into the Freeman Center um, lessons, no one knew the history of that being right. the um, Underground Railroad. And so I called Pastor Ben and I called Pastor D. I'm like, did you guys know? <laughs> and they're like, oh my goodness. But Pastor D said something so profound, which is, you know, it's amazing how they always call us home, mm -hmm. right? Like we go there repeatedly, unknowingly, but yeah. feeling on some level that this is a sacred, important space. Mm -hmm. And we were giving thanks and releasing the ancestors back into the places that they mm -hmm. traveled to come here, which wow. I thought was profound. So my painting is um, a group of people all dressed in white, releasing flowers. Oh. I brought back the um, ocean life, the turtles, the horseshoe crabs. I put them in the in, back in the water because you know humans yeah. have destroyed them. <laughs> so yeah. I put them back in the water and then you see a canoe coming from Long oh. Island in the middle, coming into Little Liberia. Wow. That's so cool. Now, just because this is a show that's that's uh, hosted by the Barnum Museum, do you have any any thoughts on P.T. Barnum? And and maybe even if you not particularly on P.T. Barnum on the museum. Yeah, P.T. Barnum is is a dynamic <laughs> character. There's a, a lot of pros and cons to who he was, but mm -hmm. I think I feel like he was he was a visionary. Mm -hmm. You know, you can like or dislike anything, but he was a visionary. Yeah. And there's a lot to be said for having a vision of something so uncommon as a circus, right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and, but following through with it because you know that that's what you should do. Mm. You know, a lot of times we have these ideas and we just say, okay, I'll do it later. Mm. Recently, Miguel Aguirre, who is the one of the co-founders of the New Yorican Poets Cafe. He passed away on December mm. 1st. And all I keep thinking is what if he was too tired yeah. to do the New Yorican, you know? What if Barnum just didn't feel like doing the circus? There would be years and years of experiences that were lost. Mm. And so I think it takes a lot of, I don't think you realize it in the moment, but it's very important that when you have these visions, when you have these ideas, these concepts, that you follow through and try to be on the right side of things, you know, yeah. treat people well, do the right things, but the hmm. the tenacity it takes to to build a vision, yeah. that especially one that's not common, right? Um, that's pretty inspiring. So, as we move forward, hopefully we're going to get out of the the pandemic. We will. <laughs> <laughs> we have. But to. once we do, what are your what are you what are you hoping for in the next? I don't know, however long, for both you, but also for this, this museum, for the Freeman Houses, what, you know, what is your kind of hope going forward? So for the Barnum Museum, I want it to be restored. Mm -hmm. Bridgeport needs this, yeah. you know, Bridgeport needs to know, to know the history, to know the dynamics of the history. Barnum, the Barnum Museum lends itself to the history of Little Liberia. Mm. I, I really can't wait because I've been at the, I've been at, there's been so many people before me, but I've been at the center now mm. of 
the work for the Freeman Center. So I am excited to see those houses restored in, in a museum and see people walking through and helping with the literacy programs and, you know, all the, pro, the arts programming we can do there that we can align with here because we have, the Barnum Museum has been so helpful um, in the stuff we've been trying to do yeah. for the past few years. And so I definitely see another museum, another place for people to come and learn how important this city is, the innovative yeah. nature of this city, the resilience of it, mm -hmm. that's going to be shown through both of the histories of Barnum yeah. and Little Liberia. If you look at, yeah. we, when, we, when we used to do the Pierre Dawson program and mm -hmm. we told the kids about museum, we used to call the exterior Barnum's Facebook page yeah. because it's all the people he knew carved into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. President um, Lincoln spoke at McLevy Hall. Yep. There's all kinds, like, but nobody is, Dr. King came here, Obama was here a few years ago. I just don't understand why we have all this history. And nobody talks about it. I know. But all anybody can say is just, no. I went to the New England Foundation of the Arts at a conference last year. Mm -hmm. And I met this woman, she has a flower farm. And she would give them to kids who are sick or people in hospitals who are sick. She was, so I said, how do you make money if you're just giving all your flowers away? And she rents them. And then, you know, instead of throwing them away, she gives, so they pay for themselves. She gives them to the kids oh, instead of okay. our, our sick people, our older yeah. people. And so she was like, I come to Bridgeport every year to see your two loves. Wow. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> she, was, she was like, it's a national landmark for tulips. Huh. Everybody comes there. And if you think about Bridgeport, every year we have tulips yeah. covering the They're whole older. city. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was like a beautification thing. It's actually tourism. I want to keep doing this work of restoration and preservation. It's really interesting to me. It's brought mm. me into a new respect and appreciation of history. Mm. I want support and backing and to <laughs> get myself into a position where my art works for me. Mm. Um, and I don't have to work so hard for my yeah. art because it has a reputation and respect yeah. that I've worked hard for. I really hope that we can help you on that journey as we I, go forward. I hope that this I has helped a little it. bit. It definitely does. And the Barnum is so supportive of me. Yeah. And you know, I have to say that to have two exhibits here, mm. both fully supported and encouraged by the Barnum and the community. Bridgeport has such an incredible community, mm. but all these people really hold me accountable. Yeah. For my, if I don't show something <laughs> quick, they're gonna get me. So, yeah. so, but I'm thankful for that, you know? Yeah. And we have a strong arts community here and we need these spaces to yeah. keep thriving. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Who is Barnum to You is produced and directed by Rui Pino, Tom Victor, and Will Saris, with thanks to Stephen Cardone. Please don't forget to subscribe to the Barnum Museum channel. That helps the museum out a lot. Click on that thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the video or if you want to make a suggestion for a future show. And if you can make a charitable donation to the Barnum Museum, please do so. That helps us bring you new episodes. All the links are in the description. Don't forget, the noblest art is that of making others happy. See you real soon.